Hi, Crawl here. So, I've heard that a lot of people have issues installing FFmpeg on Windows. So I want to address this issue now and to get into this problem at first. So a lot of people, well, a lot of you guys have this issue where when they type in FFmpeg into their console, it just tells you like straight up an error that it doesn't exist or it's it's it doesn't know like the command is not recognized by the command letter or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter in which console you do it, it, it always happens. Like you, you try to open like five different ones and, and you, you just you just can't figure out like where is it, where does it go, like how can I get this in here. Well super super easy. So first thing you do, there we go, is you google or type in ffmpeg.org, go to the website, click on the download button, Make sure to not download the tallball. This is not what we're looking for. We are on Windows, Windows 10 specifically. I, I'm pretty sure it works on Windows 7 too, but you should update. So please do that first. Click on Windows, click on the Windows builds, and then you come to the Windows builds, specifically built for Windows and Mac. You wanna choose 4.0.2. You don't wanna choose the nightly, except you know exactly what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, you shouldn't watch this video anyway, I guess. You click on the Windows 64 bit, if you're still running 32-bit, I'm a bit concerned, but it still works. Click on the 64-bit one, click on the static linked one, download the build. This puts it into your uh, downloads directory, which is fine. Now we can close the browser already. What we do next is we open up our downloads folder. We have a zip file in there, we just unzip it, however you like doing that. Either you drag it out like I did it, or you just right click it. After we did that, you can see that we have FFM back in here. We can check if it works. What it should look like is, if I can type, we execute it like this. You can just do it very easily. You do FFM and then press tab. It will autocomplete. It works. This is what it should look like. This is not what it looked like earlier. Now to open a, a shell, by the way, it's shift right click and then open PowerShell here. Otherwise it won't show up. So what we do now is we rename this folder. You don't have to, I don't care at the end of the day. I like to do it this way. Either I choose to leave the version number in there. So when I revisit the website and check for updates, I can see, okay, I'm on version 402 or not. Usually I leave it out because by just entering the command, like I just showed you, you can check the version inside of the, uh, inside of the terminal. <clears throat> so what you do next is you copy or cut, doesn't really matter, uh, that on your C drive. I already have it here, so for me it's irrelevant. And that should look like this. You go on your C drive, you go into FFmpeg, you go into bin, it's still there. Beautiful. Now, what we do next is we go in there, we click on this folder icon here. Pretty sure that works on every Windows version because I just reinstalled and this should just work. And we have the path here now. What we do is we right click it and we copy it. You can type this out manually if you're sure how to do, how to do this, like C, C colon uh, backslash and then you know the, the rest of the path. After this, we have already practically done. We copied it and we can close it. What we do next is we type in, uh, we, type, we press the Windows key, type in advanced or even only AD, depending on how much you need to type in. Usually I type in advanced. Uh, system settings, we click on this. And now we should be in the system properties on the advanced tab. We click on environment variables down here. There is a choice we can make now. We can put it into the user path or we can put it into the uh, global path, system path. The choice between those two is very easy usually to figure out. If you want other processes that may not run on your user account to be able to access, you put it into the system path. If you want processes that only run on your user account, you put it on your user variables. Save bad, always put it into system variables. Next thing we do is we click, double click this. <coughs> Look for path, by the way, just path, lowercase, uppercase P. We double click this, we get open this window, which says edit uh, environment variables. We click on new, we paste in our path. You can move it up, move it down. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day because it's only affecting uh, the position is only affecting depending on if you have two versions installed of something, which one should it pick on priority. So if you have multiple FFmpeg versions or whatever, you can just move one down and then one up again. But it's it's a hassle because you always have to go into this menu to do it. So we paste that in, click OK, click OK, and click OK again. 
Now, we're practically done, so it should work in theory, but it doesn't. What does this mean? So we need to close any console instance we have open, or we just open a new one, but we should just close all of them that we have anyway. So we open it up again, let it boot up. It takes a while for me. I have a lot of extensions installed, I'm sorry. And now we should practically be able to just type in FFM pack, right? This is the uh, expected output that we want. And there we go. Now we have a vampack in path and every process that we execute um, that needs FFmpeg can have it. We can have it in uh, every possible uh, shell you can think of, whether that be PowerShell or whether that be Git bash, that one will have access to it too. And now you should have no issues anymore running anything on FFmpeg and you don't need to install the module that doesn't work half the time or when it gets an update, you know, it's always better to rely on the native way, which this is. I hope this was informative for anyone that had issues installing FFmpeg so far. Uh, I can also make a video on how to install build tools if you want to without NPM because that one is a hassle too for a lot of people. So let me know if you need any further assistance on this. Uh, I hope you don't because this was, this is already taking quite a long time. So this should really cover everything for FFmpeg. Thank you for watching.